Um, and of course, the, the wonderful um, uh, Imer Krihan for that song uh, and, and her direction, so thank you. Okay, so moving on to our second keynote speaker. Um, so, uh, Fung, Fungai Murao is a highly experienced public health expert with emphasis in, the, in HIV and sexual and reproductive health and rights fields. And she is a passionate researcher who believes that continued research that leaves no one behind is critical to ensure that we remain on target to ending AIDS by 2030. Fungai currently um, works as an independent public health consultant focusing on policy, advocacy, and project delivery, and serves uh, on the board, uh, uh, she serves as a board member of the NGO Beyond Stigma, and she's particularly passionate about the needs of women living with HIV, and originally from Zimbabwe, she now lives in lovely Brighton. So a big, warm, warm Irish welcome for Fungai. Oh my goodness. Um, Andre, I, I don't even know what to say. We've known each other for years. This is the first time I've heard you speak about the realities. I want you to know that we're with you. Um, So firstly, thank you to everybody that's made it possible for me to be here tonight. Thank you for having me and on a stage that I know as many of my mentors have been on for many years. It saddens me that I never got to meet Father Michael Kelly, but I'm very grateful for all the hard work he did in the fight against HIV. It now falls to us to continue this vital work because HIV is not over. It is this cheeky virus that if left to its own devices, it destroys lives. And that's what's, hap what's been happening in the past few years. The world went into lockdown due to COVID. We saw HIV and sexual health care professionals being deployed. Routine blood tests postponed or delayed or canceled. Cervical cancer screenings also delayed or canceled. Women giving birth on their own. Isolation put a strain on people's mental health. It's not only COVID, as we have heard, that is slowing us down. War, floods, displacement, hunger in my beloved Africa. As women living with HIV in our fabulous diversities, we continue to try during these hard times to support each other the best way we could. We moved much needed peer support to digital platforms. One of the networks that I volunteer for, the 4M Network of Mentor Mothers, which is a peer-led organization mainly by migrant women who have come from African countries supporting other women in the UK and now with sisters in Kenya and Uganda. We saw that it was really, really important to not only keep supporting each other, but to share the lessons we were learning with other networks. So we mobilized and wrote little research, wrote our report called Confinement during COVID. And this is now, this was shared widely. It started opening up a little bit of flexibility to allow women living with HIV, giving birth, to have somebody there during a crisis like COVID, to have somebody there to hold their hand to ensure that that child was given the ARVs as soon as they were born. Because sometimes when you've delivered, you're in, you're in quite a vulnerable position. You need an advocate, you need somebody to speak for you. A bit further afield, and I'm smiling widely because I'm going to speak about Zimbabwe. We will see something very special from Beyond Stigma. And I'm so grateful that they did this essential work in Zimbabwe because the kids there and the people that they helped in my home country will remain ever so grateful. I'm not going to spoil it because I think it's a nice little surprise. 
But again, some of this work had to be moved to an online platform, so they did not have that richness of connecting face to face, which is always sad. Another thing that I'm very proud of about during lockdown and it's carrying on is making waves in Salamander Trust on behalf of uh, ITPC Global conducted a mixed method global research on sexual rights health and SRHR, it's easier for me to say, with the third report in the series recently published. One of the uh, research methods was focus group and one was conducted in Fathers Kelly, beloved Zimbabwe. As, as Zambia, sorry. This report highlights 10 key messages and related recommendations. Challenging, uh, um, highlights the ongoing chronic challenges facing women and girls living with HIV. Normal is not always normal, no, not always good. We need to sustain our SRHR, maintain our mental health, ensure our education. This is not just book education. This is education around looking ourselves to live the best lives that we can. Validate the work of people on the ground. So validate our, our vital work. Secure our livelihoods, protect our privacy, safeguard and safety, invest in digital inclusion. If we're all moving to digital platforms, we need to make sure that everybody is included. And lastly, fund what we need and want. So I'm talking about funding. We know that it plays a critical part in the fight against HIV. So firstly, thank you to the Irish government for their commit, for your continued commitment and support of the Global Fund. Every euro truly saves lives. Thank you to all other funders, especially those that fund grassroots organizations. For it's people, like Andre again said, on, and organizations that are on the ground seeing the daily effects, know what to do with that precious money. Let's, however, try to move away from having too many restrictions and short project funding. We need to have and maintain safe spaces, especially for women and girls who are living with or affected by HIV, to come to safe, open spaces. This takes resources. I'm not going to leave the stage without highlighting that uh, women, and, women and girls living with or affected by HIV face many challenges that, that are not limited to the ones that I'm going to say, health inequalities, comorbidities such as diabetes, high blood pressure and others. Immigration issues because people are moving around so much to try to find a safer place. Immigration issues lead to living in unsuitable accommodation and poverty. Fear of the unknown when somebody moves to a new environment gender-based violence, mental health problems, and not having much access to research opportunities. But the most is stigma, including self-stigma. I, I could honestly stand here and talk to you all night about self-stigma. But I, I want to share some words that my dear friend who spoke on the stage in 2016 with Robbie shared, and these words have helped me through some really tough times, and every time I get an opportunity to speak, I try to share them. So he says, it's been self-stigma that has been more challenging, a more challenging issue to overcome, as it can be all-consuming, completely overwhelming. There is no combination ARV pill for self-stigma, nothing to help one achieve an undetectable level of self-stigma. You see, for this is the power of self-stigma its ability to strike at the, at, the, at the very core of our inner belief system, to make us believe what others think of us, of how society views us. It's taken him a journey of many counseling sessions, therapies and medication, and the wisdom of age to overcome some of these issues. Yes, they still linger, but we all have to remember that these privileges are not available to everyone. That's words from my dear friend, Sean Mellows. So on this World AIDS Day, with the theme of Equalize, I want to share what it means for women. We need equal access to sexual and reproductive health services that hold our rights, 
seeing us as a whole person because sometimes HIV is the last thing on our mind. But let's take a little moment to celebrate. Let's celebrate you equals you. Let's celebrate PrEP. Let's celebrate that more countries support women living with HIV to choose their route of childbirth and choosing how they're going to nourish their child and be supported in doing that. For all of us to join this party of celebration, we need to ensure that U equals U is a reality for all, which means that we, uh, viral load testing has to be available regularly and access to continuous antiretrovirals. We also need to encourage and make PrEP more accessible to women. We understand, we need to understand people's realities and meet them where they are. We cannot have a one size fits all for everyone. A good example is about poverty. We cannot assume that we all have access to food, which is needed while taking some of the HIV meds. I read an article the other day where a mother was so poor she gave her child food while she went without and I suppose she kept her fingers crossed that she will still remain virally suppressed. I also want to talk about the third 90, now 90, 90, 90 targets about viral load suppression. This can only happen if we keep people in care. We need to find where people are and make sure that the services that are provided are the right ones for those people. People also need to be made to feel welcome to clinics even if they haven't been there for a while. We need, and also we need to ensure that representation of the, of the people that we're supporting is upheld. Representation truly matters. So let's join each other and, um, as fighting this little tiny virus takes all of us. It's teeny tiny if we give it the right things. If we give it its medicine, it goes to sleep. But we all need access to that medicine. We need government, policy makers, healthcare professionals, other stock, uh, stakeholders to stop and ask themselves once in a while, are they truly, are they, are they meaningfully involving people living with HIV in all they do? Because you cannot do anything for us without us. I have been living with HIV for nearly 20 years. I have two incredibly beautiful daughters and I celebrate each life as a gift. Thank you for having me. Wow. wow, I can't cope with the level of speakers here tonight. Nadine, what are you doing to me? All right, Robbie and I were saying, oh, um, Funga lives in Brighton, so next year, free gaff in Brighton Pride will be there. Yeah, gaff means home, free, yeah, you know, you know, oh, good, 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 right. Okay, so thank you very much for those wonderful words and for giving us an insight around HIV and particularly women and girls. And we're, I'm looking forward to hearing more as, as you'll be taking part uh, in, the, in the panel.